Hey momshies, it's mommy Ruth and welcome back to my channel and today we're going to talk about overwhelm, my experience with it and how I was able to overcome it in five easy steps. If you are an overwhelmed mama, <laughs> just keep on watching. Okay, so welcome back to my channel, Mom She's. It's Mommy Ruth. And if you're new here, I do all videos about motherhood, money, and daily vlogs here in Baguio City. Ayan, naka-jacket ako kasi malamit ko. <laughs> Today's topic is overwhelm. I've always wanted to talk about this as in talagang malapit to sa heart ko kasi lagi po akong overwhelmed. <laughs> Ever since I got pregnant, 2017 hanggang ngayon, 2021, yun yung pinaka-worst episodes na sunod-sunod na talagang na-overwhelm talaga ako. May mga days na nakaiga lang ako sa kama kasi I just gave up on myself. <laughs> And napakadami ko pa sa head ko na gusto kong tapusin, going project, simulan, you know, things like that. So, today I'm going to share with you five tips that has helped me after dealing with this for almost four years now, since 2017. So, let's get right into it. The first step is acknowledge that you are overwhelmed. So sa simula, hindi mo alam kung ano ba talagang nararamdaman. Basta alam mo may something off and wala kang gana. So ito, ito yung nilista ko yung mga signs. It just applies to me ha. I don't know if it's clinically proven. Pero for me, sa research ko, sa Google research ko and everything, later on ko lang na-realize, overwhelmed na pala yun. Yung mga signs is number one, wala kang motivation to work. Anxious and stressed ka about something. For me, this is and has always been about my grab car business. It's always giving me stress and anxiety every time mawawala ng driver, every time na may bago na namang requirements si LTFRB, and every time na wala akong pambayan. <laughs> sa monthly ng aking kotse. yon grabe talaga yung stress ko sa grab car business na yun. Hindi siya joke nung sinabi kong I feel like I grew 10 years in my life because of starting a business like that. 10 years may dinagdag niya. Another sign is parang hindi ka makapag-relax, hindi ka ma-settle down, hindi mapakali kasi something is bothering you. You're worried about something. Another sign is overthinking. Lagi ka na lang tulala, ang dami mong iniisip, hindi ka makapag-focus sa, for example, pag saing, hindi mo na alam, ilang cups na ba yung nalagay ko? <laughs> hindi mo na sure. Another sign is you don't feel like you are yourself. Meron tayo yung parang self natin na happy and relax, alam mo yun. Parang hindi na ikaw yun, parang ka ng ibang tao. <laughs> Meron pa, another sign, nagpe-play ka ng scenarios in your head. I always do this. I think it was part of our training as flight attendant. We always play scenarios. If this happens, if fire ito, ito yung gagawin mo. If this happens, ito yung gagawin mo. That's our review every day before going to a flight. So parang naging habit ko na rin siya sa life ko. Parang nag-overlap siya. If hindi mag-boundary si driver, ito ang gagawin ko. If hindi magbayad ng rent si tenant, ito ang gagawin ko. Ang dami ko ng scenario sa head ko. Tapos iniisip ko, these are the different ways kung paano hindi ko makukuha yung goal ko. Baka magkaroon ng abiria dito, baka magkaroon ng problema dito. Yun na yung laging tumatakbo sa isip mo. Mga different scenarios. So, that's a sign, mom. She's na you're overthinking na. Hindi na siya normal or hindi na siya healthy. So you're hurting yourself na when you're doing that. Another one is yung feeling na nasa fight or flight mode ka. Either gusto mo na nang mag up sa something or gusto mong labanan yung something. So that's the fight or flight mode which is a very stressful, stressful mode yan guys. Kasi grabe yung adrenaline sa bloodstream mo nyan. It's been activated yung amygdala mo or something like that. It's been, yun yung mga yung mga nababasa ko sa Google. <laughs> Google speak. Di ba nga? And then another super easy to spot sign or symptoms na overwhelmed ka na is you can't sleep. Dahil nga nag-iisip ako ang dami kong matakbo sa utak ko hindi tuloy ako makatulog it happens to me all the time pag ano nagkakasakit yung mga anak ko or na injured sila lagi kasi may injury pag lalaki yung anak mo na kunod no 
parang laging nangyayari sa amin yun. Nag-overthink ako kung anong pwedeng mangyari. Nag-doctor Google ako, alam mo yun. So, hindi na ako nakatulog pag ganun. Or pag nung inisip ko, anong homeschool ang gagawin namin kay Kuya River, para na-shock ako. That's one of the examples na hindi ako nakatulog. I was researching about it. I was trying to strategize, think about anong plan of attack namin sa pag i niya or something like that. And last but not the least is low energy. Nakatulog ka naman pero pag i parang pagod ka pa rin. Wala kang gana, wala kang motivation, wala kang gana, wala kang physical energy to do your workout or to go out of the bed. So those are the signs na you are overwhelmed. Gabi na ka, five minutes na pala tayo. Importante kasi yun guys na ma-acknowledge mo or maging aware ka na Uh, these are signs of overwhelm. Kasi for me, for the longest time, I think mga dalawang taon, feeling ko parang I'm just being moody or ganun. Postpartum. Pero actually, this happens to me. Ang trigger is if meron akong gustong i-achieve or meron ako sa project na gusto kong i-start. Like when I started teaching vlogging sa seminars, But ang dami ko pang ongoing projects. Like for example, yung flight attendant school ko. I was pregnant with baby Rain. Parang sobrang daming nangyari no na na-overwhelm talaga. Yun talagang classic example na sobrang extreme kasi na-hospitalize ako nun guys. So, <laughs> hindi magandang ma-overwhelm kasi dumating na sa point na ganun. I have in my mind, ah, parang overwhelm to. Pero hindi ko talaga siya tinitingnan na masusing pagtingin. Alam mo yon parang binabali wala ko lang or lagi ko na lang binabrush off na wala lang to wala lang ako sa mood maybe tomorrow will be better pero hindi it wasn't better <laughs> and then magiging nagagalit na ako sa sarili ko kasi bakit ako ganito hindi naman ako ganito dati asa na yung a personality type na go 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 yun kasi yung personality type ko guys I'm a go 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 achiever person so sobrang frustrated ako when I became a mom and I was struggling with this and there's no one that I could talk to and can relate to about it. Kasi wala namang exact thing online that I see na exacto sa nafe-feel ko or sa case ko, which is a mom, and then parang napaparalyzed kasi maraming gustong gawin, and then wala namang nagpupo siya kanyang gawin niya. <laughs> so parang questionable. <laughs> Pero anyways, overwhelm is real. It took a toll on my mental health. So yun yung nangyari guys. So I'm sharing this with you. Hopefully you are able to spot it on yourself if you're going through this kasi this somehow commonly happens if you experience a big change in your life, which is usually pag naging nanay ka, yun. <laughs> For me, doon talaga siya dumating na sobrang nakapagpakripple na aking life, the way I live my life. Sobrang na-affected siya. So, yun yung first step. Acknowledge it. Second step is, ay, sobrang love ko to. I brain dump on paper. So, meron ako isang notebook and I would just, kung ano yung tumatakbo sa isip ko, yung nakakapagpabagabag sa akin, <laughs> ilalagay ko siya on paper. Kasi ako rin yung tao na parang ayaw kong mag-istorbo ng mga friends ko, ayaw kong sabihin sa kanila yung problema ko. Kasi actually, hindi ko rin alam kung ano yung problema ko. <laughs> hindi ko pa siya sure. So parang confused, ganun. <laughs> yung best friend ko is actually, she's like my sister, she's a frontliner. So I didn't want to burden her. Yung mommy ko is also a frontliner. My tita in the States, whom I called mom. She's a frontliner also. She's a nurse. So, I'm close to people who are like frontliner and at the start of the pandemic, lalo nang mas lalong hindi ako masyadong nagsishare sa kanila. I just let them share to me yung mga problema nila. But for me, hindi ko na sila masyadong ina. Kasi farang 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 ito yung bigat ng problema. Tapos ako parang ito yung problema ko na hindi ko ma-figure out kung bakit wala akong motivation. Putting it on paper lets your thoughts flow without judgment, without anything. So usually, pag nag-brain dump ako, kung ano lang yung pumasok sa isip ko, usually to-do list, budget problems, anong gagawin sa ganitong ganyan na problema, ano yung na-feel ko na something na I need to do for my kids or something I need to do for my channel, video ideas. All of these things parang naghalo-halo na siya, nag-scramble na siya sa head ko. I brain dump it on paper. And then the best thing I do is either I use 
something like this na maraming kulay or highlighter pen. Alam mo yung Stabilo Boss or ganito. Yung mga ibang kulay, ayun, iha-highlight ko yung mga kailangan kong i-organize. So, after na, na labas ko na siya lahat sa paper, usually, if sobrang severe yung nararamdaman ko, hindi ko na siya babasahin ulit kasi parang sobrang dami, guys. Magbasahin ko pa siya ulit, na overwhelm ulit ako. But, during days na after like two days, pag okay na ako, titingnan ko siya ulit. Nandun kasi yung mga to-do list. Iha-highlight ko yung mga kailangan kong i-highlight and then i-organize ko siya in another planner ng mga to-do list ko or mga grocery list na kailangan kong gawin or mga toddler activities na gusto kong gawin for the kids. Naha-highlight ko siya or iba-ibang kulay dyan na organize ko siya, nakakategorize ko siya. Kaya gusto ko rin tong iba-ibang kulay. Okay din si Stabilo Boss pero isa lang kasi yung Stabilo Boss ko. So kung, ayun, isa-isa lang din. Maganda siya na nalabas mo na lahat on paper, mas manipulate mo yung nasa head mo kaysa sa, nandyan lang sila sa loob, ba diba? So parang nagkakaroon ng feeling of lightness after ka mag-brain dump. Minsan, dumadating sa point na hindi ko na talaga alam yung gagawin ko, bakit ako inis na inis and everything. Mag-brain dump ako. Sabihin ko, iinis ako sa asawa ko. <laughs> Ganoon. Naiinis ako sa anak ko. <laughs> ganyan, ganyan. This is like a safe place na you can journey and then write your thoughts na walang magjudjudge kayo. Okay, so bad mom ka kasi nainis ka sa ano or something like that. Tip number three, ang um, pinaka the best way for me to get motivation again. Every time na nawawalan ako ng motivation. This works for me time and time and time again. <laughs> Sinusulat ko po ang aking budget. <laughs> Every time I write my budget, at wala akong ganang mag-work, wala akong ganang mag-freelance work, wala akong ganang mag-film, wala akong ganang mag-ayos ng bahay, maglinis and everything, mag-asikaso. I just write down my budget for the month, guys, or the next month, kung okay na yung budget ko. And then, usually kasi lagi yung, alam niyo na, <laughs> laging may kula, <laughs> laging may hindi nagbayad na brand <laughs> or hindi nagbayad na boundary or may hindi nagbayad na tenant. So, ako, I have to get myself motivated again para yung kailangan kong bayaran that month, masalo ko siya or makover ko siya. So, since ang dami kong insurance, <laughs> kasi adik ako sa insurance, <laughs> kailangan ko talaga doble kayod and then lalo na nung time na binabayaran ko pa yung mga kotse at walang income na pumapagawa so, so grab talaga yung motivation ko nun. So, yun yung motivation ko guys na kahit like for now, it's 2 a.m. 2 a.m. Yan. Uh, kakatapos lang ng aking freelance work. Kaya ako yung nag-film na kasi nakaayos naman ako ng konti. Konti, hindi naman sobra. Yun talaga. It's weird. Hindi ko alam kung bakit yung ibang tao nanonood sila ng videos. For me, the only way na ma-motivate ako is titingnan ko kung magkano yung bayarin ko and kung magkano yung nasa bank account ko. Pag hindi sila tugma, talagang grabe. Gigising talaga ako or hindi ako matutulog para matugma ko yun. Or kung ano yung financial goals ko. Like for example, financial goal ko na makabili ng trust fund or makabili ng ganitong stock ngayong buwan or makapag-invest sa stock market. Talagang kailangan ma-push at ma-achieve. <laughs> kasi minsan may emergency, kahit anong budget mo, nawawala ka sa budget kasi may kailangang tulungan sa family and things like that. You know na, alam nyo na yun, mga Filipino moms. <laughs> normal na yun sa atin. Tip number four. Ito talaga, I've mentioned this on my other mental health series video about burnout. Sobrang effective din to sa pagiging overwhelmed mom. Yung realization o yung spirituality comes in. You know, minsan talaga, si Lord lang talaga makakapag-save sa atin. Yung realization ko na the Lord God is my provider. He will not forsake me. Kung ano ang kailangan ko, He will provide. Hindi si husband, hindi si freelance client, hindi si work ang um, Diyos ko. Ang Diyos ko sa si Lord. And then, si Lord, He always provides for His children. And time and time again, mas grabe pa to sa number three na yung motivation ko. Time and time again, the Lord has always came through for me. Whether it be a new brand deal, whether it be my friend ako na biglang mababayad ng utang. Mm -hmm. <laughs> diba? Whether it be may bagong racket, si Lord talaga 
minsan kahit last minute, sinasalba niya talaga ako when it comes to worries ko sa mga anak ko or finances or worries ko sa health. Talagang the Lord God is my provider. Pag nisip ko yon yun lang yung panlaban ko talaga these days, guys. Kasi sa panahon ngayon, parang everything is so blurry. Election, you know, daming negativity. Mga chismias, mga friends na nagkakasakit sa COVID, friends na namamatay dahil sa COVID, family and friends. So, talagang downer talaga siya. Pero every time na ina-affirm ko yung sarili ko na the Lord God is my provider, He will not leave me alone. I am worthy, mahal niya ako, I am loved, I am favored, I am his favorite daughter. Every time na tinatry kong i-remember that, yung overwhelm at the core, at the core of my being, nakakalma siya. Kasi usually na-overwhelm tayo kasi meron tayong negative beliefs about ourselves. Like for me, ang negative belief ko is what I do is never enough. Yun yung na-discover ko lately. After you know, struggling with it for more than four years now, or I think all my life. And then, um, whenever I achieve something, kaya ako achiever, kasi yun yung coping mechanism ko eh. Sa pakiramdam ko deep inside na hindi talaga ako enough kasi lagi akong iniiwan, you know, namamatay, yung aking mom or yung lola, mga care provider ko when I was a young kid. Lagi silang umaalis, pumunta sa state, nawawala. I always felt like abandoned, unworthy. So at the core, lagi akong anxious na baka mawala ang mga nagpo-provide sa akin and things like that. Every time na babalik ako kay Lord and i-affirm ko yung the Lord God is my provider. Yung core emotional wound ko, medyo nag-heal siya pa unti-unti. That's my tip number four for you guys. Ang dami kong sinabi. Haba na ng video na to. Good luck naman. Okay, ito. Super quick lang. The fifth tip could be an action plan that you can do after watching this video is I time my task. Nag-set ako ng timer, let's say, 5 minutes. Kung wala talaga akong motivation, 5 minutes, lilinisin ko yung bahay. 5 minutes lang. Turn na, nag-set yung timer, wala na. Or kung wala ako sa mood mag-edit, sige, set ako ng 5 minutes, mag-edit ako just for 5 minutes for the day dahil tulog si Rain, pero eh, tinatamad ako. Pero if I do this, this is a technique na napag Panood ko kay Jordan Page, kay Emily Norris, mga YouTuber moms lang din guys. Siset ko lang siya and boom, you'll be surprised ko how much ang um, pwede mangyari. It's just that stepping stone. That's just the beginning. Yun talaga yung stumbling block natin mga momsies. Bakit tayo nagpo-procrastinate? Bakit tayo hindi gumagalaw or nagpapadala sa overwhelm? Once again mga momsies, I'm going to summarize ang aking tips for you guys for overwhelm. Number one is Acknowledge that you are overwhelmed. Number two, brain dump on paper para mawala yung overwhelm sa head mo. Number three, get motivation where whatever it is that you do to get motivation. For me, I write down my monthly budget. And number four, affirmation that the Lord God is your provider. Ayan. And number five is start a timer or time your tasks. These are my top five tips for an overwhelmed mom. These are what has been working for me and I'm still doing it, guys. Because every now and then I do get overwhelmed. Masama niwala kayo o sa hindi. So anyways, I hope that you like this video. If you did, check out my other video about burnout. And sana makatulong yun sa inyo. Again, always remember mga momsies, we should always take care of our mental health. Kasi tayo lang ang ilaw ng tahanan. And tayo ang sandigan ng ating mga kids and family. So we have to take care of ourselves. Hashtag self-care. Post nyo yan sa comment below. Hashtag self-care if you agree and nakaka-reach kayo up to this part of the video. Ayan ang aking, ano, ang aking mga kakosa ka, ma'am, she's. Maraming salamat for always watching the videos that I put out. I really appreciate it pag nagko-comment kayo. So, attendance check tayo sa baba sa ating mga suking mummies. So, hanggang dito na lang po. And I will see you guys on the next video. Bye! Mm. Thank you.